what do you need to know about Altus Suite and the Casper exam for the residency match? I'm Dr. Rajani Kata, the author of The Successful Match to help medical students and IMGs successfully match into residency. And this year there was a bit of a wrinkle in the residency application process. And that is the fact that there are now some programs that are requiring either the CASPER exam or two other assessments that are offered by Alta Suite. So in this video, I just wanna update you with an overview of what this means for you as an applicant. So Altus Suite is the maker of three different assessments. Now, we know that when you're applying to programs, there are definitely measures of your cognitive skills. So they might be looking at your grades, they might be looking at your step scores, but residency programs are really interested in your non-cognitive skills and attributes. So compassion, empathy, interpersonal communication, teamwork, a lot of other really important skills and attributes that just aren't picked up by a test score. So traditionally, the way the residency programs have looked at your possession of these skills is they've looked at things like your rotation evaluations. What are your attendings saying about you? They've looked at your letters of recommendation and they're really applying, uh, they're really relying on the assessment of these skills during the interview. So they're asking you questions and the interview is very important for this. But one of, the pro one of the problems that programs have experienced in the last few years is that every single program has just really seen an increasing number of applications. So they've been looking for additional data points before applicants get to the interview stage to try to decide who to interview. So one of those potential assessments is the three different assessments that have been used by Altus Suite. So I'll give you the example of the CASPER exam, which is known as a situational judgment test. And this is an exam that's actually been used for years in the medical school admissions world. But as of 2021, uh, 20, last year at the time that I'm recording this, there were 11 programs that piloted use of the CASPER exam in the residency admissions process. And what we're seeing now in the 2022 cycle is that many more residency programs are adopting this as a requirement that you take either the CASPER exam or two other assessments that are offered by Altus Suites. Duet is one of those assessments where they try to match up um, a program and an applicant's um, priorities, values, mission. Um, they survey applicants on different facets of this and try to match a program with an applicant via that survey. And then there's also Snapshot, which is a one-way interview tool. And then there's Casper exam, which is what I'm gonna talk about a little bit more in this video. I've written a book about the CASPER exam to help applicants to medical school succeed on the CASPER exam. And it's a surprisingly challenging exam, so I wanna make sure you're prepared going into it. Um, as of 2022, um, a lot more residency programs, you know, 11 piloted it last year. For this application cycle, a lot more residency programs are requiring it, as well as the ophthalmology match. So if you're applying to a program, um, such as one of the residency programs at UCSF, you need to be aware of what these assessments mean and especially you need to know how to excel on that. So let me go over that a little bit more. So what is the CASPER exam? I mean, this is the test that's being required in the ophthalmology match this year. So you need to know a little bit more about it. The CASPER exam is known as a situational judgment test. And basically, when you're taking this exam, you're given 15 different scenarios. And these are pretty challenging scenarios. They don't test your medical knowledge. Um, you know, they might take place in a personal setting and a workplace setting. Instead, they're designed to test, these scenarios are designed to test 10 different qualities. Qualities such as collaboration, communication, professionalism, ethics, problem solving. So that's the way the scenarios are set up. They're trying to look to see if an applicant possesses these traits. And the way they do that is they present the scenario to you and you will either read text on your screen or you'll watch a video 
And then you'll have about 30 seconds to think about it, and then you have to give a response. It's not a multiple choice exam. There is no right or wrong answer. Although I have to say there are definitely stronger answers and weaker answers. But the way you give this answer is you either videotape yourself giving a response for 60 seconds, or you write out your response, or when I say write, you type out your response with about 90 seconds per response. So you're presented with a scenario and there's three different questions per scenario and then you either videotape or you type out your response. And I've done the practice test that's online, I've done some of the practice questions. They're surprisingly challenging, there really is no right answer and it can be very difficult to quickly get down your response. So one of the things that um, you will be told is that you don't need to study for the CASPER exam. And I agree that you don't need to study for it because there's not a right or a wrong answer, but do you need to prepare for it? Absolutely. Even spending just a few hours in preparation will significantly enhance your ability to respond well. And the reason for that is one of the features of the CASPER exam is it is under a lot of time pressure. One of the reasons the makers of the CASPER did that is because they wanted to get your automatic response. So they want to really find out if you possess these qualities. So they do that looking for your automatic response. And the way they do that is you're under a ton of time pressure. It's really hard to get your responses down in 90 seconds. And so when I talk about the strategies to help you do well in the CASPER, I really focus on strategies that help you organize your thoughts quickly and then strategies that improve your efficiency. So if you invest a few hours, you can really enhance your ability to do well in the CASPER exam. So 15 scenarios, three questions per scenario. You're either gonna respond by typing or you're gonna tape yourself with a video and it's definitely under a lot of time pressure. So that's a little overview of what the CASPER exam is. So here's the question that applicants have been asking me. How do I do well in the CASPER exam? Well, I mentioned that you need to invest a little bit of time and we are going to provide links in the video description to the six part blog series that I've written about how to do well in the CASPER exam. The ones that I will really direct your attention to are what are the five types of questions that are found on the CASPER exam? The other one that I really emphasize is top tips and strategies for how to do well in the CASPER exam. And um, I really emphasize those two because you're gonna learn some really easy techniques such as noting down key details as they're presented to you, scanning all three questions before you start typing, and then especially learning the five types of questions that are most commonly asked on the CASPER and learning what types of frameworks we recommend to respond to those questions. So this is, um, these are really quick reads, so I really recommend that you look over those blog posts. I also have a, um, an example of some of the CASPER scenarios along with our responses. And then if you're further interested, we have a CASPER test prep guide. Again, a quick read, but it has a full length sample test with sample responses that can help you get an idea for how to provide a response that emphasizes your possession of these 10 qualities the makers of the CASPER is looking for. Now, one of the things that's really hard when we say how can you do well in the CASPER is the fact that the makers of the CASPER exam have never published an example of a good response. So if you Google this and you look online or you watch videos, um, people might tell you, like this is an example of a good response. The fact is that there's never been a rubric that has been released by the makers, so we don't actually have any example of what they consider to be a good response. So instead, when we have created our strong responses, we're really focusing on responses that you can get down in 90 seconds and responses that highlight your possession of those qualities. So keep that in mind, but those are some of the key features on how to do well with the CASPER. What residency programs are requiring the CASPER for this cycle, 2022? 
we are linking to our blog post about programs that require the CASPER and we're updating that blog post as we get more information in. I already mentioned that ophthalmology, the ophthalmology match is requiring that applicants take the CASPER exam, but the exam is also being required by, as of the time of this recording, 17 different anesthesiology programs, 32 different ob programs, it's being required by some programs in general surgery and internal medicine. And so there are a number of programs across the country. When I looked at the list and including things like University of Michigan, um, University of California, San Francisco, Emory University, NYU, a number of different residency programs across the country. So it's really important that you check your particular residency program, then you want to make sure if you are planning to apply to any of the programs that are on the list, you should really take the CASPER exam as soon as possible because some programs are using this in deciding which applicants to invite for an interview. So you want to make sure you have that CASPER exam completed because there's not a ton of test dates. You have to schedule on the website of Altus Suite. You have to find a date um, that works with their schedule. And so, and then you have to give them some time to grade your exam. So if you are looking at this list and you see one of the programs that you're interested in is requiring it, take that exam as soon as possible. And again, refer back to our blog post for an updated list. Will the CASPER exam be used to weed out applicants? That's another great question. And the fact is, of course, that it's going to depend on the individual program. So the big question in your mind may be, if I don't do well in the CASPER exam, is that going to remove me from consideration? So it's gonna depend on the individual program, but there are some indicators from the pilot program that was launched last year that some programs may consider a low score on the CASPER to be a red flag. So for example, if you look at Altus Suite's website, they did quote one of the program directors in general surgery who said that they did find that when they asked students to take the CASPER exam and snapshot that there were some red flags that, there were, that were revealed. And so that to me suggests that they're looking at that and they may decide not to invite an applicant based on um, so anything that they consider a red flag. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I think the fact that we don't know I think what that means is you have to take it seriously and you have to do well. I would definitely say you want to try to avoid being in the lowest quartile on the CASPER um, assessments. The CASPER is graded as of this year, top quartile, middle two quartiles, lowest quartile. So I think you have to put in the time to make sure you're not in that lowest quartile because I think there are some clues that some programs may consider that a worrisome finding. So the converse question is another important question. Can a CASPER score, can a great CASPER score help you obtain an interview? Again, it's gonna depend on the individual program, but again, if you look at the website, there were some quotes that to me indicated that some programs would consider this um, an important data point and might make them more likely to invite an applicant for an interview. So for example, one of the program directors was quoted as saying that they did invite several individuals who had a really high score in the CASPER exam for an interview who blew it out of the water, but they noted that without that high CASPER score, these were applicants who probably would have been waitlisted. So if you get a great score in the CASPER exam, there is at least a chance at some programs that it might make you more desirable as an applicant to interview. So another reason to put the time in to do well on the CASPER. So I wanted to wrap up this video by really encouraging you to spend at least a few hours learning about the CASPER exam and learning strategies to do well on the CASPER exam. I think at some programs there is a chance that a really high score may make you more desirable and I think there's also a chance that a really low score at other programs may, other programs may consider that a red flag. So how can you do well in the CASPER? Again, we've written a six part blog post series on how to do well in the CASPER, so I'm gonna refer you to that. We also wrote a book on how to do well in the CASPER and it's a quick read. Um, and I really wanna caution you that 
if you go online, some people will even say, like if you go on Reddit, some people will even say, you don't need to, you don't need to prepare for the Casper at all. Just go in cold and you'll do fine. If you have the basics, if you're a good person. Um, and I think, I think I would say that if you really want to do well in the Casper, I think it really helps to take a practice exam and there's an official practice exam on the website. You need to learn the format. You need to be comfortable with the fact that this is a really quick exam. And I don't think you get to learn any of that unless you spend a little bit of time working with actual challenging scenarios and trying to type out and record your answer. So you are gonna to need to do a little bit of practice. So if you're taking the CASPER exam this year, I wish you all the best. Good luck.